What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to take a surface and make it look as if it was made as a part of a physical model with stacked pieces of wood. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so in this case what we want to do is we want to model our surface. And so the way that we're going to do that in this case is we're going to start with sandbox tools. So we're going to make sure that's enabled over here. And what we want to do first is we want to start by creating a from scratch sandbox. And I'm going to look at this from the top down just to uh, get kind of a better view of this. But notice how you can click on this button for from scratch in order to create a sandbox. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave my, I'm going to set my grid spacing to something like five feet. And then I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to draw a sandbox right here. And I'm not worrying too much about my height for right now. So I more wanted to make sure this was all centered, but this actually worked out perfectly. Um, it's exactly the height that I want. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to start by just using the smooth tool over here in order to create the surface that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click in here. I'm going to activate the smooth tool. Remember the smooth tool is going to allow you to move things up and down in here. You can also adjust the size or the radius of this by typing in a new value. So in this case, I'm going to type in a radius of 150 feet and hit the enter key. So then what I can do is I can start slowly moving this down so that I can see my shape on the side over here like this. And so what I want to do is I'm going to move this end down over here. And then what I might do is I might move this back up, but I might adjust the size. So I might bring this up to something like 60 feet so that I can get a little more fine control over here. I'm going to bring this up because I don't want this way, way down on the side of my model here. I just want it down a little bit. So, and then I'm just going to kind of keep adjusting this. And what I want is I want part of this to be inside of my hill. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this up over here so that my hill is kind of covering part of my building right here. And we don't have to get crazy precise on this, but we do want to be at least somewhat precise so that this looks kind of the way that we want it to look. So maybe something like this. And so let's say, for example, we've got this kind of in our hill, which is perfect. That's kind of what we want. But let's say that we wanted to create a flat space in here. So for example, let's say that we wanted this to be flat, kind of around where this building is, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line up like this. And I'm going to assume that I'm going to have a flat area, kind of where this whole space is in 3D, right? So I want this to have a flat area kind of right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that up above and then I can use a tool up above called the stamp tool in order to create kind of a flat space over here. So I can just select this. I can click on the button for stamp. Then I can click on this surface right here. And notice what that's doing is that's actually going to stamp this surface down. But one of the things that we're running into right here is it's not giving us kind of a soft fall off in here, right? What it's doing instead, if I was to click, is it's giving us this really steep fall off, which is fine if you're going to build a bunch of retaining walls or something like that. But I would assume that we'd want to kind of slope this back instead. So I'm just going to do an undo. And when we first activate that tool right here, notice that you can type in a value for an offset. And so the offset is going to be this space right here where this red line is that affects how hard this falls off. So in this case, maybe I want my offset to be something like 20 feet. So I'm just going to type in a value of 20 feet and hit the enter key. One thing I wish this did that it doesn't do is it doesn't really dynamically adjust where this red box is. So what you have to do is you have to just jump back out of the tool and then run it again in order to see what that space is going to look like. But in this case, I think 20 feet is probably going to give us what we want. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this so that it's close to aligning with the bottom of this object. So notice how I just clicked in order to do that. It doesn't have to be perfect because what we can do is we can just use the move tool to move this up and down like this. So now we can use the move tool to move it up and down on that green axis and more exactly inference to this. Um, and I'm just going to move in 
a little bit in order to do that. But now we can align that base with this face right here. And one thing I don't necessarily like about this is I don't really like the way that the geometry looks in here. So a lot of the time what I might do is I might uh, erase all of this out and then use an extension like soap skin and bubble in order to create some better geometry in here. So what I might do is I might just go to like top down view or something like that and just erase out all of this geometry like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line to this point right here. I'm gonna draw a line to this point right here. Because what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to select this as if it's a closed shape. And so you're just gonna come in here and you're just gonna select all of these edges. And then we're just gonna run soap skin and bubble which i will link to in the notes down below in order to fill this in and i'm going to go ahead and set my division to something like 20 or we'll go ahead and type in a value of 30. that's just going to create a smaller mesh in here but i can just hit the enter key and what that's going to do is that's going to create a smoother surface in here instead of what we had before so and then we'll do the same thing over here just make sure you've picked up all of those edges then we'll just run soap skin and bubble again. Same thing. And hit the enter key. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to use the extension slicer 5 in order to slice this. But the problem with this, where this gets a little bit tricky, is you need to be able to, um, this needs to be a solid in order for that to work. Right, so if I was to hit escape and come out of this and then just click on slicer five, uh, first of all, it's gonna ask us to save, but then it's gonna tell us to make sure that this is going to be solid. So what we're gonna do in that case is we need to use the extension joint push pull in order to push pull this down so that it's actually a solid shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, first off, I'm gonna hide my buildings for a minute, and then I'm just gonna take all of these and do a control A and I'm gonna explode them. So when I explode them, that means this is all gonna be raw geometry in here, right? Well then, we can use the extension joint push pull in order to extrude this down. I do recommend saving your model at this point. And then, we just wanna come in here and we just wanna activate joint push pull like this. And I will link to all of these in the notes down below again. But for this one, what we wanna do is we wanna use the vector push pull option. What vector push pull is gonna do is it's gonna let us push pull all of this geometry in one direction. And so there's a couple things you need to do in order to do this. Um, by the way, if you're not seeing these options over here, you wanna make sure you click the little arrow over here so you can see those. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you've selected the option for project the shape on a plane. That's gonna project everything down so that it's flat. So you also wanna make sure that you've set your finishing to thicken. So thicken means you're gonna keep your original faces when you do this. But then we're just gonna single click and move our mouse. We'll notice what that's doing is that's actually thickening this whole thing like this. So that it's flat here on the bottom. So you can see how this is creating a flat plane with this whole thing. But then we can just click like this and that's gonna bring this whole thing in and it's gonna create it with a base right here. And so hopefully, if you're lucky, <laughs> this is gonna be a completely solid group that you can come in here and slice. So if it's not a solid group and it just says group, then you're probably gonna have to come in here and erase out some internal faces or make sure there's no gaps. Um, it just needs to be a solid for this to work. But now what I'm gonna do before I run Slicer is I'm gonna save this model right here. All right, so one thing I might recommend is I might recommend taking this and making a copy of it and creating your slices with the copy over here. That way you're not messing with your original mesh in case you do need to change something. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit save and then I'm gonna activate slicer. And so what we wanna do is we wanna slice this on the Z axis. We wanna set our spacing to zero 
because we want no spaces between these objects, and we want our thickness to be something like five feet. You could do something smaller too. Um, that's just gonna affect the um, thickness of the slices that you're creating. So maybe I could do like two and a half feet or something like that. That's gonna double the number of slices, which does mean this is gonna take longer, but it will look a little bit more detailed. So you wanna set your insets to zero. Centralization on slice is fine. Add references, you want no. And flatten, you want no. So those are going to create copies of those off to the side of your model. You don't necessarily want that. So we're gonna click on OK. All right, so now we wanna slice this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select it, activate slicer five, and we just wanna set our parameters. So in this case, we wanna slice this along the Z axis, which is the vertical axis. And then we wanna set our thickness and our spacing to be the same. So in this case, I'm gonna do two and a half feet for my spacing on this right now. So the lower this value is, the more slices are going to be created, but you do wanna be careful because it can create a ton of slices in here and it can freeze up your computer. So I, I would recommend saving before you do this so that you can kind of test run this and close out a sketch up in case it just kind of gets stuck. But in this case, we wanna set our spacing and thickness the same because we don't want a space between these different levels. Well, we wanna set our insets to zero centralization on slice is fine. And then we wanna set these two options to no. What these would do is create copies off to the side. Um, and we don't want that. You want that if you're doing something like a CNC router or something like that. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on okay. Um, it's gonna ask if we wanna add the outlines of adjacent slices. I'm gonna say no. And I'm just gonna let this run. And so it's gonna slice this at every two and a half feet on the vertical axis. So it's gonna turn this into slices. There we go. So. What we've got is we've now got this 3D terrain in here that looks like it's made out of slices of wood or something like that. And then when you're done, you can just take the whole thing, you just move it back over right here like this. And then we can just hide our original terrain. Or I'm gonna unhide my building first, and then I'm gonna hide my original terrain like this. Well, then we could come in here and we could adjust the colors. So this whole thing gets tagged with this purple color, right? But we can just come in here and just adjust that. And so a couple other things we could do. So right now these edges, for example, look really clunky, right? And the reason that they look really clunky is because they've got all of this uh, extra geometry in here that's just kind of showing where that geometry was. But an easy way to fix that is you can just select this whole thing and we're just gonna use a tool called Soften Edges. If you don't see Soften Edges in here, you can go to your window default tray and turn on Soften Edges or just open the Soften Edges window on a Mac. But then I'm just gonna double click in here and we're gonna go ahead and do a Control A to select all these levels. And I'm just going to check the box for Soften Coplanar. Then you can use this slider to adjust how the edges are hidden in here. So you can see how this is automatically doing this. Don't drag it too far to the right because you get this kind of like weird um, shaded look, which doesn't look very good. But you can use that to quickly soften those edges. Then you could come in here and you could apply a wood material or something like that in order to make this look more realistic. All right, so I will link to a couple other videos about these extensions on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.